Hello and welcome folks to a new video. Um, so if you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I am a little bit obsessed with balancing robots. Uh, I haven't built one in a little while, so here we are building a new one. Um, this is kind of a new type of one for me. It's this guy in front of you here. Um, and basically this is sort of an inverted pendulum balancing machine, but the balancing mechanism is via a reaction wheel, which is this weighted um, disc on the top of the machine that is driven by a motor connected at the back here. So basic principle, the machine pivots on a little axis down at the very bottom. It's unstable on its own, but the balancing scheme is that we rotate this wheel and the wheel changing direction creates a reaction force which balances out the robot. Hence the name for this robot is a reaction wheel balancing bot. Um, so we're going to go through this a little bit. I'll talk about the machine itself. Not super complicated little machine, so I'll just give a very brief overview of the kind of mechanical design, things like that. The main thing I want to do with this today is I want to use this to expand on some of my PID control content. And in this video... Hey guys, uh, Future Ian here. So just a quick message that uh, what I'm about to say next is uh, factually incorrect. So uh, basically this project ended up being a bit of a wash uh, and I kind of messed things up. So this video is not actually going to have any good content in it for PID tuning. Uh, but what it is going to do is just going to be an honest uh, representation of just a project that I messed up on and ended up being a bit of a failure. So keep watching if you want to see that. But if you're only interested in PID tuning content, then I'm afraid this isn't the video for you. We're going to tune this um, PID controller. I'm going to step you through my process and how that works for me. So let's go. So like I said in the intro, the mechanical construction for this is really quite simple. Um, it's basically just three 3D printed parts. There's a little base piece here. It has a bearing press fit into the back of it. Then with a shoulder bolt, we have connected up the main kind of body arm piece of it. And then attached to the spindle, which rotates, we've got the wheel itself that has a bunch of holes in it where we put in bolts. The bolts are to add mass to the outside of the wheel, which gives it um, more inertia, which means it'll have more of a reaction force. So very, very, very simple, just a bunch of 3D printed parts. The only part that's not 3D printed is the mounter, the motor mount at the back and the whole housing unit that has a little drive belt. Uh, and that's actually a reclaimed part that I got off an old vacuum cleaner. Um, for that reason, I'm actually not going to publish all the CAD for this like I normally would, just because unless you can somehow source this exact part, which I also modified slightly, you're not really going to be able to recreate this exact thing itself. So sharing the models isn't all that useful, but I'll share all the code, which is more or less going to be the same, regardless of whether you're using exactly this model or not, or if you manage to put together your own one. So this isn't actually the first design of this that I came up with. This is an older design where I had the piece not the main arm piece not mounted to anything. It would just have a little rounded base where it was supposed to sit on the desk and be able to balance itself in kind of in free space. I made this little V-shaped holder, which kind of serves two purposes: a little stand to hold it vertically, and also this would position it basically perfectly level so that the calibration routine that runs at the very start would have a good zero reference point. I've had trouble with that with balancing bots in the past that if you zero them in an unbalanced position then they're trying to balance in an unbalanced position and that just doesn't work um, unfortunately the problem with this guy was that there's not a lot of friction between the 3d print and you know kind of any surface that i had to put it on and it kept sliding around the place with the reaction forces so i decided to abandon that and go back to the kind of pivot fulcrum method which is what i've settled on now so we did some initial testing and uh, we've had to make <coughs> a couple of changes. So uh, first thing is this base piece. So previously you saw we just had one of these pieces with a little bearing in the back uh, and it was kind of cantilevered out. Uh, unfortunately, there was just too much vibration, not a good enough fit on all the parts. So uh, I was able to print a second of the identical part, fit another bearing, and now there's just a pin going the whole way through the back. So that pivot is just a lot more stable, which is good. Uh, and then the other change I had to make was the little rotor attachment. So you see, this was the old one we were using. Um, and this guy, unfortunately, didn't have enough inertia to actually create a proper reaction force. So um, this ring being larger has a larger moment of inertia than this small one, which means that as it changes direction, it has more force. So this guy, I was doing some initial tuning testing just to 
you know validate that this was going to work at all and this guy just wasn't able to generate enough reaction force to be able to balance the thing um so the formula for moment of inertia i'll throw up on the screen somewhere um basically you'll notice in there for an annulus which is this kind of donut shape where most of the mass is in kind of a ring around the side and the center doesn't have a lot of mass so i'm calling this an annulus it's not quite but closest equation i can find and you'll see that uh, in this case and this is also the case for a disc either and um, of like you know solid material with one mass the whole way through but you'll see that the moment of inertia um it increases based on the mass but also based on the radius squared so if you make this even just a little bit bigger in terms of its radius you get a much larger output in terms of its moment of inertia which means it'll have more of a reaction force when it starts and stops so that's where we're at now and now we are going to try and tune this guy because i'm fairly confident it has enough force uh, to be able to balance itself it's just a matter of doing the actual pid tuning so we're going to do that now so this is me starting to tune the PID controller, and at this point, it was starting to become apparent that things weren't going well. Um, my tuning wasn't really responding in the way I was hoping it would, and it started to become apparent that the mechanical design of this was one of the things contributing to how difficult this was. So typically, with a inverted pendulum, of which I've built a few, um, they'll be more stable the taller they are, and also... Um, the heavier the weight at the very end is. So with this little design, it actually is quite short because I just wanted it to be one small little piece that I printed on the printer at one go. And it happens that the way I was repurposing an old motor and little drive transmission, most of the weight of it, which is the motor itself, was about halfway along the pendulum as opposed to being right out at the end of the pendulum. So this meant that it was a very unstable mechanical system to start with, um, which obviously didn't help uh, things at all. Another issue with the instability uh, came a lot from the sensor that I was using. Um, so I was using an MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit, which like they do work uh, and you can get some reasonably good data out of them, but they tend to be quite noisy. So if you're interested in kind of looking at say whole degrees of, of pitch roll or yaw, you can get you know reasonably good rounded value of that, um, which would be pretty accurate. The problem comes down when you want a very you know stable, uh, measurements of very small increments of less than a degree or so then you start to get into like some very noisy readings which just adds again more noise into the system which help which prevents it from becoming stable so you should be able to tune around that but in this instance because of how mechanically unstable it was and how sensitive that system was the whole thing just compounded to mean that i couldn't really tune it for stability The final piece that contributed to the issues I was having with this, I think, was the motor itself. So this motor was salvaged from an old vacuum cleaner. Um, it ran like the rotating brush at the very front of the nozzle. Um, and it's actually an 18 volt motor, but the only power supplies I had to hand were actually 12 volts. Um, so with that, it meant that the motor is running at a lot less than its kind of rated top speed. Now, the motor still was able to run pretty quickly, but one of the issues that we would have is that um based on you know my zero to five volt pwm frequency with this driver the problem was that you'd have to get to a relatively high uh, duty cycle before the motor would actually spin at all so there was kind of this dead band in the middle where the motor wouldn't be responsive which just reduced the overall responsiveness of the speed that i had control over so that's not ideal either um, the motor would kind of sing quite a lot as I was trying to tune it where I'd be pulsing at too high frequency and it couldn't really respond, things like that. And then obviously being undervolted didn't help anything either. So yeah, kind of a lot of different things going on there. But yeah, can't have helped. Certainly not an ideal choice of a motor for this kind of project either. So what you saw there is about as good as I've been able to get it. Like we can sort of get it to oscillate a bit. <laughs> But it will still fall over. If I let it go, it still falls over. But it's as close as I've been able to get it so far. I'm not going to lie to you. This has <laughs> kind of been kicking my ass a little bit. So I was, you know, hoping this would be a quick and simple sort of instructional type video. But now it's a, oh God, I need to make this work type video. So 
Uh, I'm going to keep working on this and see if I can figure it out. I will talk about what my tuning is actually doing, but I want to get a handle on you know how this is working first because it clearly seems like I'm doing a misunderstanding something here. So I'm going to keep playing with it and see if I can figure it out. Alright, so this thing is still absolutely kicking my ass. Um, this was meant to be a really quick and dirty like build, uh, just to demonstrate something. You know, the, the meat of this was meant to be me talking about the BID tuning itself, but I cannot for the life of me get this thing to work. Um, which leaves me in a tricky position. I'm not sure what to do next. Either I go off and redesign this to make sure that it's actually going to work, and then come back, or I come up with a whole new system to demonstrate what I wanted to talk about, which was just the difference in, you know, PID tuning values and stuff like that. So I have to go off and think about that, um, and God knows how long that'll take me, but it'll only be a second for you guys, so, you know, a couple of seconds time, you're going to see what decision I've come to, and uh, we'll keep going. I kind of don't want to just abandon this. I feel like I've sunk so much time into it. Maybe some cost fallacy. And I think this thing looks pretty. But fortunately it just doesn't work. Um, so yeah. I'm going to go off and have a think. And then I'm going to be right back. Hold on. Alright team. So I think <laughs> this is the end of this project. Um, yeah. It's pretty much kicked my ass. And I'm going to leave it here. Um, leaving it with this pile of shame of everything that's gone wrong in this project, all the iterations and fried electronics components, which uh, was always fun. So yeah, this tested my resilience and honestly, it just kind of, this design fundamentally is not going to work well. But the point of it wasn't the design of the thing. It was meant to be something I could just slap together, make work and then do my video about PID tuning. So I think I'm going to leave this here because I've sunk enough time into this um, and yeah, it's it's not been helpful. Um, biggest problems that I had turned out using one of these little MPU 6050s. I've used these before, but in this instance, it wasn't great. Um, being on top of this kind of pendulum, far too noisy. Pendulum, not super long, very sensitive to any kind of movement. So with that, didn't have a huge amount of control authority over it to then end up being able to absorb that noise and stuff. So that's not great. I then resorted to... <laughs> Uh, coupling a little potentiometer onto this shaft with some printed gears. Unfortunately, couldn't get a <laughs> good enough gear ratio to get the resolution of this to work well. So yeah, I'm calling it here because this just hasn't worked out well at all. Um, a lot of the time I wouldn't publish something like this if it didn't work, but I'm going to publish this whole thing just as an example of this is what can happen when you're just, you know, working on projects like this and things just don't always work out well. Um, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, we have to get over it. The more you make stuff, the more you break stuff, the more stuff won't work. You just have to move on. So if I only ever published all the good projects, then, you know, I don't think that'd be a fair representation of what it's like to actually try and build projects, document them and publish everything, warts and all. So this is one of those projects. Didn't work out. Um, I still do want to go and do my, um, project about PID tuning. So I will be doing that. At some point um but i'm gonna come up with a different rig for it <laughs> i actually do have an idea of something I'll go i'm gonna do for it so stay tuned that'll probably be coming up in my next video anyway um i hope you enjoyed this odyssey that we've been on <laughs> may not have been very satisfying but anyway this is what it is it's real life um so thanks for watching guys and i will see you in the next one